They're terrible. Their attitudes suck. So recently I did a video of species of tarantulas that I do hold out of my 80, 90 tarantulas. I narrowed it down to just five that I will occasionally handle and how I do that in all of that info. So if you missed that video, I will link it down below. And in that video, I asked if you guys wanted me to go over the species of tarantulas I would not hold. And overwhelmingly, you guys said yes, of course. There's one comment in particular that said, do five species of tarantula that you would not hold, but make it new world only. And I think that's a great idea. It goes without saying that handling old world tarantulas carries more of a risk. They're faster. Their venom is more potent. Some of them are much more defensive and inclined to bite. They don't have urticating hairs as their first defense. So you have a higher chance of getting bit if they are feeling threatened. So I personally wouldn't hold old world tarantulas. I know some people do. I wouldn't intentionally. I do have a few that are very docile that I feel like would tolerate it. But it's one of those things where you weigh the risks versus the reward and it's just not not interested. Oh, and I also wanted to make these a little bit more beginner based. So these are going to be more beginner species of tarantulas or common species of new world tarantulas that I see people getting maybe as their first tarantula or maybe as their first 10 tarantulas. So yeah, I just thought it would probably be useful if I geared it more towards that. So one of the most common species I see people getting as their first tarantulas is a Phonopelma samani. Or the Costa Rican zebra knee tarantula. This is one that is very common, at least in pet shops in the United States. They're very inexpensive. They're very plentiful. They're typically wild caught. So, but I see a lot of people wind up with them as their first tarantula, which I don't think is wrong. I think they actually could make a great first tarantula, but would I hold one? No, N at least not intentionally. I'll say out of this entire list I'm gonna talk about today, this is the probably the most handleable of the ones we're gonna talk about, but I still wouldn't do it intentionally because in my experience, they are extremely flighty. They will take off, they're very skittish. I remember when I first got Bubbles, she was an adult female and when I was rehabbing, housing her. I didn't I don't think I filmed this, but I was rehousing her. She took off running in our bedroom and I remember having a catch cup, grabbing it, putting it over her, and she kept running with the cup on her. Like she literally just kept running with a catch cup on top of her. And I was like, "Oh my god. The fact that that didn't even stop her from running kind of shows me how skittish they are. And when they're more skittish like that and they can be kind of quick like that, it risks them falling much easier. Fortunately for me, I was on the floor, I was just rehousing, I had a catch cup ready. But if I was trying to handle her and she took off like that, she would have just fallen on the floor. And I think I even remember hearing somebody say that they're a Phonopelma samani, they dropped it and the abdomen ruptured. So I mean, it, it can happen and it's like, I feel like more likely to happen with that species. Another reason why I just don't think I would hold my Phonopelma samanis is because typically if you give them enough substrate, they're gonna stay underground, which means if they're underground, you're not really gonna have access to them to kind of coax them out and onto your hand. They're just not much of a display species. They stay hidden a lot, they stay underground if they have the space, and they're, they're kind of fast for a New World Tarantula. Another kind of beginner-based species I see people want to handle is the Green Bottle Blue. These are really common beginner tarantulas because they seem to really do it all. They're pretty dry based, so you don't have to worry about humidity as much with them. As long as they have access to a water dish and you kind of like fill it up and let it dry out and fill it up, it, they're pretty foolproof in that respect. They're often marketed as semi-arboreal, so they'll do a lot of webbing up top. So you're gonna wanna give them like some burrow space and a lot of webbing and stuff like that. They're really interesting because their colors change as they grow. They grow pretty fast. 
This is a green bottle blue. I'm gonna insert the scientific name because I'm not even gonna try saying it. But the reason why I wouldn't handle them is because one, they are very flighty. I'm fast as fuck, boy. So kind of same thing we talked about with the Samani. There's a high risk of them taking off, being really skittish. I will also say that in my experience, green bottle blue are a little bit more food aggressive. I mean, something moves and the first thing they do is pounce on it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> And another really important thing that I wanted to mention is they're notorious hair kickers. And even when she was a sling, when I would just take the lid off to feed her, she would kick hair at me. And now as an adult, she will still kick hair at me sometimes when I just take the lid off to feed her. Now their hair isn't as irritating as other species of tarantulas, but it's still not something you want to get exposed to repeatedly because that can cause more of a reaction over time and make you more sensitive. Okay, so the next one I guess is considered more of an intermediate species, but I wanted to put it on the list because for some reason I see the species handled all the time. And I'm not like trying to dictate what species somebody's allowed to handle. Like it's your tarantula and your choice and you're the one who has to weigh those risks versus rewards. So not my place, but what I want to say is that I would never hold a tea stirmy or a tea blondie. And there, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, one being they're very food aggressive, so the second something moves, they're on it, they wanna eat it, and so that could be your finger. Probably the biggest reason why I wouldn't hold one is because their urticating hairs are extremely irritating. If you've been here a while, you're already aware that I had a very questionable reaction to my t Me Zelda's hairs. She's not one to kick very easily, so I will say that, but usually they are. The reason why I got exposed to her hair so much was because when she molted, she kicked this huge hairy mat all over and it was just like, tons of urticating hairs. It's actually a really clever like defense mechanism. It protects them. They, they are from fire ant territory. So when they kick those urticating hairs and they're vulnerable like that molting, those urticating hairs actually will penetrate the fire ants and other kinds of ants that might prey on them during that vulnerable moment. So a lot of times that entire genus will kick those urticating hairs onto their molting mat before molting. And so just being exposed and kind of getting hives and stuff from that. Got this molt in here. Is this overkill? Maybe. Do I care? No, I literally don't care. I, there's no way I would want to hold one because they're really prone to kicking those hairs and also the risk to them is really high. I'm actually pretty scared right now. His bite's super intense. Oh my god, he's on me. That's his warning signal. He's lifting up both of his arms. I'm so scared. I'm like shaking. They are big, chonky, huge, thick terrestrial tarantulas. They are not very good at climbing. They are good at being on the ground and being bulky. So when you're picking one up and they like fall, it's really likely that they will get a fatal injury from the shortest fall. The, the bigger the tarantula is, the more likely they're going to be injured and even the smallest fall. And on top of that, they're very flighty. So it's just like a terrible storm of reasons why you shouldn't. And, and again, I'm not trying to say like anybody's bad or wrong for doing it. Those are just my reasons on why I personally would not. Next one I would not handle is anything from the Samopeus genus. I know a lot of people start with Samopeus erminia. I haven't kept that species, but they're pretty similar, okay? And let me just say, Samopeus are more fast and unpredictable than Pokies, Postlotheria, the old world genus of Tarantula. They, you never know which way they're gonna go. They're very fast, they teleport. I unfortunately handled my P. Cambridgey when it was a sling by accident. When I was doing a rehousing, they are arboreal, so the first thing they're gonna do is run up, and what is on top of your head? 
your hair. That's where they aim every time. So I was rehousing my Samuel Paez Cambridge. He has a sling and she ran right up my arm, going straight for my hair and my head. So the fact that they're arboreal is another good reason why. Like, no, you probably don't have to risk them falling as much because they're gonna be more inclined to climb and, and better at that in that regard, but they're, they're very fast and they're gonna go straight for your face and your head. <laughs> another thing, it's a rumor, so I don't wanna like give misinformation, but from what I've been told, their venom is supposed to be slightly more potent than other new world species of venom. Again, I think this is a really understudied thing, so I can't say for fact, but this is like the rumor I've heard. If you wanna chime in and you know more about that kind of stuff than me, definitely comment down below, let me know. But that is the rumor and enough of a reason for me not to want to handle one. And probably the most non-handleable new world that I can think of is the Toledo Cattle Vegans. <gasps> Mexican red rump. They're terrible. Their attitudes suck. They threat pose me all the time. If I pour water in their enclosure, they attack the water just because it's moving. And also, they kick hairs a lot. So I don't want to be exposed to the hairs frequently because again, it can cause sensitivity over time. Not something I'm really wanting to happen. But generally, yeah, they just have really bad attitudes. And I see them as beginner tarantulas because they're really available. And like they are a new world species, they're really fun to keep, but I would not hold one ever. Ah! Down below, you guys should comment what species you wouldn't hold. I'm kind of interested to see what your answers are because this can really be like a big opinion-based thing. Like, I don't know. So let me know. And anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like it if you did, subscribe if you're not. And you want to be... Don't forget I have an Instagram video. It's probably way too much. It's at tarantula.cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon podcast and a Teespring. It is all linked down below. I will see you guys soon. Let's get into the Patreon pet picks. 